Hey everyone, in this video, I want to quickly look at the ability to now have data plane role-based access control for Azure AD identities for Azure storage accounts. As always, this is useful. Please go ahead, like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of new content. So historically, I can think about, well, yep, I have my storage account. Now, when we talk about many resources in Azure, there's actually two planes of interaction. I can think about, well, there is a control plane, and these are activities I'm performing via the Azure Resource Manager. These are maybe creating resources in Azure, modifying the resource in Azure. But then very separately from that, there is a data plane. And I'm typically not interacting with that through ARM at all. They're gonna have separate APIs. For example, for Azure Storage, there are REST-based APIs to interact with the data plane. So this here, I'm gonna say this is a storage account. Now, what we're used to with Azure Storage is there are these access keys. There's two of them, so we can rotate one as we're doing sync with the other one. And the challenge is this is really all powerful. So maybe the pattern would be that, hey, I'm a, a user and I have the necessary permissions. So I would go and talk to the control plane, get the access key. So I'm going through this path, get the access key, and then I use the access key through the REST API to go and talk to the data plane. The access key is all powerful. Maybe we're storing it somewhere else. Maybe we're using shared access signatures, which is a more granular set of permissions on a subset of the objects. And of course that shared access signature is actually signed by the access key. So I could go and get that maybe a valet key type pattern where there's some broker giving those out to the applications. Because I'm drawing a user but it's more likely to actually be some kind of service that wants to interact with the data. So what's changed is when I'm thinking about the storage account, I'm really focusing on the blob, queue, and table. There's also files, and files is a little bit of a special case. Typically we're interacting with files with things like the SMB protocol, and then the permissions on the actual files within the share they're typically gonna be governed by, hey, I'm authenticating with Kerberos. Now that could be integration with Azure Storage through Active Directory domain services, could be Azure AD domain services, now can be Azure AD directly with its Kerberos support. And so what I wanna focus on now is the idea that for all of these services, there's now the ability to, at the data plane level, I can have role-based access control. So based on the Azure AD identity, on these services, I can now set the same type of role-based access control we're used to with the arm of the control plane for blob, queue, and table. So now I don't have to use the access key at all. I could even disable the access key of my storage account so people can't bypass these permissions. If I disable the access key, I also can't use shared access signatures because they're signed by the access key but I now have that option. And if I shift to this idea of using data plane role-based access control, I remove all of the challenges with, well, I have this access key and it's really powerful. I have to maybe store it somewhere, or I have to worry about the shared access signatures and generating those and storing those somewhere. When I move to using data plane role-based access control, now the service principle of my application, for example, can just be given some of these data plane role-based access controls, they go and talk to Azure AD, they get their OAuth token as always, and they use that via the REST API to get whatever permission I've set on that blob, queue, or table. So that's really the huge driver behind this. Now to demonstrate this, I'm gonna use Storage Explorer. Now, when we use Storage Explorer, in the past what it would do is it would go and get the access key and use the access key but I've configured my configuration here. So if I go to services, 
that's actually disable the usage of keys. And you notice I've turned this on and I've restarted it. So what this means is when I'm interacting with the storage services through Storage Explorer, it can only use the Azure AD role-based access control. Now, super quickly, if I show you the storage account itself, if I look at the access control at the storage account level, you will see absolutely I am an owner. So at the Azure control plane, I can do anything I want. In the past, I could go and get the access key and I could have used that. Note, if you do shift to this model of using the data plane RBAC, I can go to settings configuration and this is where I could go and disable, so I would set this to disabled, the use of the storage account key completely. I can also use Azure policy to drive this and um, check my actual usage and that I am adhering to that policy. And obviously I can't use shared access signatures either. But if I go back and look at this, so I currently have this owner permission. But there are other roles. You'll notice I also have this one, storage blob data owner. And what's special about this is if we look at this role, and there are multiple of these roles, we're used to this idea of actions. And these are actions I can do on the control plane. And you can see, hey, I can create user delegations key. I can do all these different things, but the things we care about are actually data actions. I can read blob, write blobs, delete blobs, add blobs, filter blobs. I can do all of these di different things. There are actually actions that apply to the data plane of the Azure storage account. And there are multiple roles with different sets of permissions. If we go and scroll down, and actually make this a little bit bigger so we can see it, we'll notice, well sure, there's storage blob data contributor, owner, reader. So I have these different roles available to me. You'll also see there are roles about SMB shares, that's about getting access to the share itself, and then the rest of the file and folder access is through that Kerberos integration. But also notice, hey look, there's Q data permissions. And we also now have table data permissions. Now, right now, my account only has blob. I don't have any queue or table permissions. And we're gonna see that. So if I jump over to the application, if I go and look, so I'm in this storage account. Remember, I've disabled the use of the access key, so I can't work around the data plane RBAC permissions. I can absolutely go and look at blobs, because I have that data plane permission at the storage account level. But if I try and access a queue, it's failing. I am not authorized to perform the operation. I don't have the permission. If I try and look at a table, that fails as well. Authorization permission mismatch. I'm not authorized to do that. So this is where you can see, hey, I'm actually having those data plane permissions. So if I was to jump back over to the portal, now realize I'm doing this at the storage account level. For Blob, for example, I absolutely could go to a particular container and just give permission at a container level. I have the access permissions there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grant two more role assignments. So I'm gonna add a role assignment and the role I'm gonna give myself, I'm gonna give myself, well, let's have a Q um, contributor. And I'm gonna give this to a user, but notice I could do managed identity. I could do other service principles. So I have the full sets of permissions here. But I'm just gonna give this to me. And if we go and look at the accounts, there's me. And I'm also going to give myself, so that was the contributor, so I could submit things to the queue, I can dequeue things from the queue. I'm also going to give myself permission on the table. 
So I'm gonna do another permission. But this time, do you know what? Just do table data reader permission. So we'll do data reader. Once again, I'm gonna give it to myself. There we go. Oh, yep, there we go. View and assign. So I've given myself those two roles at the storage account level. So if we now go and look, we can see sure enough, I now have storage queue data contributor and storage table data reader. And we could look again at those roles. If I look at storage table data reader role, the data actions, I can query table entities. If I was to look at the storage queue data contributor and I look at the data plane actions, or I can read messages, write messages, delete messages, process messages. So now if I jump back over to my storage explorer, and let's try and access the queue. Okay, so it can take a little bit of time. So let's actually close this down. Let's refresh all. Let's try that again. Okay, so it takes a little bit of time. It is not instant. Through the miracle of editing, um, I will condense <laughs> all of this time down. Okay, now I didn't get an error. So now let's try and add message. So test, and it's there. And I can dequeue messages. If I go to the tables, Again, the amount of time varies. It's sub 10 minutes and the same thing will happen if I remove the roles. I'll carry on having access for a little bit of time. But notice I can see all the entries. Yeah, I can try and add an entry. Just need some unique partition key. It fails because remember, for table, I only gave myself the read permission. So I have those very granular data plane role-based access control. And this is the whole point. So for those services, for the blob, for the queue, for the table, I can now use that data plane role-based access control to give the roles required to the identities in the Azure AD, be it a user, a service principal, a managed identity, which is a special type of service principal. But I don't have to use these access keys, shared access signatures anymore. I can just focus on the identity. And that's really it, that's all I wanted to show. Again, remember, if you do shift to this model, do go and disable the access keys unless there's something else that requires that to really lock it down so it's only these data plane roles uh, that apply. That was it. I think this is super useful and think about shifting to this. And until the next video, take care.